Okay, this is part three of my kitchen island build. In this part, basically I build the drawers and get them installed. Let's get on with putting these drawers together and getting them installed in the cabinet. And I forgot to hit record. I cut these to 16 inches. I need 15. And then I, I basically resawed them. They are now just under a half inch. Plans call for a half inch. I think this will work, but I need to clean this up just a little bit. So now I'm going to run them through the drum sander and glue them up into panels. And after they dry, I'll take them over there and we'll see how they look. Well, I either can't read plans or I don't know. Because the plans say the drawer fronts should be three quarters of an inch, not a half inch. So these are not going to work. But it would be nice if they did because this stuff book matches beautifully. And I would love for the drawer fronts that I have to glue up to be book matched. But short of gluing these to a sacrificial dummy piece in the back, which I could do. Well, let me put my thinking cap on and I'll be back. One of these days I might learn to read. <laughs> An idea, I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these up and then I'm gonna take, I didn't show this on camera, but I worked up a bunch of pecky cypress and filled all of the pecky stuff. My wife didn't like it. She thought it was too, it just wasn't, it didn't look, she didn't like it. So I stained it so that it would kind of match the rest of the cabinet. She didn't like that either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these that I had already milled up for the drawers for the fronts because they're not quite thick enough either. I'm gonna glue these into panels, cut them to size, glue them on here, <clears throat> run it through the planer till I've got the thickness I want on both sides and I've got my drawer fronts. So that's what I'm doing. And my anti-bow method, also because it works. I'm not really worried about the squeeze out. I can get that out with a scraper. I'll leave these in the clamp for ugh. I'll leave these in the clamps for a few hours. I, I ripped a couple of test pieces for my eight-inch drawers, glued these together, book matched, and I think they're gonna be really, really pretty. So that's what I did. I booked I did these two and I'm going to use the cypress that I was gonna use on the fronts but it just was too dark. This will be the inside of the back. So what I will do, because this wasn't quite thick enough by itself and these aren't either. So I'm milling these down to a quarter of an inch. That'll give me the joints, the glue joints that I need once I sandwich these two together. So I milled this down to a quarter. I milled this down to a half and I'm going to glue these up. So this will be the outside of the drawer this will be the inside of the drawer, doesn't matter, and we will go from there. So these are the two 8-inch drawers. I was happy with that result. That said, I'm going to do the same thing for the two, four 6-inch drawers and the two 5-inch drawers. But the first thing I had to do was rip these pieces of cedar. So I did that on the table saw. I've got a thin curved blade in there, it didn't lose much. About the same as I lost on the bandsaw. So I'm going to go through the process of gluing these up so that they're book matched. I just have to figure out the prettiest face. Got a good squeeze out. I'll come back in a few hours and scrape off the excess glue. And when this is dry, I will run these through the planer and my drum sander like I did these and get them to thickness. For the two five inch drawers on top, I won't need to go through this. I'll simply cut two pieces or one piece. I'll cut a 16 inch piece of cedar, rip it. They'll be wide enough. This is over five inches and the drawers just under five. so. Yeah, these are five and a half inches wide, so that's plenty. And that'll make the drawer, one piece can make the drawer fronts for the five inch pieces. It's still, I'm gonna use the, these old pieces back here for the inside of the front. Once I get those finished, and I say once I get those finished, because I my work surface, my assembly bench is taken up by the carcass, because I'm working on getting stuff on it. My workbench 
And my table saw are taken up with the cedar. I'm keeping them over here to keep them flat. And it's taken up with this stuff. So there's not a whole lot that I can do all at once. I have to do this in steps, which is one of the reasons this project has taken me quite so long and why I'm having to break the video up into two or three parts. But I'm really, really happy with how it's coming along. Took these out of the clamps this morning, ran them through my planer to get them roughly to thickness, and then through my drum sander to get them almost there. Had a few cracks uh, in the knots, so where there's knots, there's a few cracks, and so I filled those with brown CA. Start by medium thick brown CA, then I will finish sanding these to thickness tomorrow. I'm gonna let this dry for several hours, and I've got other things that I need to do this afternoon. Now, so I need to cut these to 15 inches. Square these ends up. One of the things I like about this Craig miter gauge is it is just dead accurate. The, the ones that come with your table saw aren't bad, but they're not great either. They take a lot of fine tuning. Stop block, you can pull it up out of the way, and I've got it set just about where I want it. So now all I have to do is take these pieces and just cut this end off. Now I've just got to put this against the stop, cut the, end or, the other end off, and all my drawer fronts are done. These are milled, so now I need to cut the rabbit on this piece and cut them to proper length so that when I glue them up here, there will be that channel here that the side panels go in. What I'm talking about is this right here. The long end of this is that front that I'm gonna glue on to that piece of pecky cypress. I'm gonna cut the pecky cypress to length here and cut a rabbit in it right here and then when I glue those up that will be ready and then when I cut the dado in the side pieces it'll just fit right in. Now if you don't feel safe making some of the cuts that I make, don't. Gotta let those dry and I'll let them dry overnight. We'll come back. I bought this glued up pine because it's wide and it's flat and kiln dried and stable. I'm gonna use this for the drawer sides. I'm gonna have to plane it down to half inch, it's three quarter, but that's okay. First thing I've gotta do is rip it to size. See how many sides I can get out of that. I'm going to use it for the side and the back. Okay, now for the six inch drawers. finished ripping this two by eight to width or thick not thick it's width based on what I need and this pretty much stayed straight I can smell some pine pitch or resin 
because this is pine. This says Southern Pine, kiln dried, heat treated, four sides smooth, S4S. That does not mean that this wood is not gonna move when you cut it and mill it. There are internal stresses in the piece that are gonna, you just never know what they're going to do. I ripped this off of it. Can you see the bow? I see a big bow about right in here. So it's not straight at all. See the gap? That's because of the internal stresses on the wood. You want to try to use as straight grain of wood as you can to try to help avoid issues of that nature. And I've got to split this in half, resaw it for more of the back. And I'm kind of worried now because as much as that moved this way, I don't know what this is going to do when I move it because that's where the pith was. I guess we'll see. I'm going to do this in multiple passes so it's not so hard on the blade or the saw. And when you're doing something like this, a splitter is absolutely essential so that the wood doesn't come back in on the blade and pinch it, creating a bind. That causes kickback and it's very dangerous. Resawed wood. And that's one way you can resaw lumber. This blade, the thin kerf on this blade, it's maybe 3 30 seconds. Yes, the bandsaw is a little bit thinner. You might get by with a 16th of an inch curve on a bandsaw, but what's a 30 second among friends? And I get a straighter cut with this than I would my bandsaw because I don't have a high end bandsaw. I mean, it's not bad and it does a great job for what I use it for. Let me switch over to my planer and get this plane down to thickness and then we will, we will lose our minds because we've still got to do another one of these for the five inch drawers. So I'll plane it all at the same time. This came out of one piece of wood. I mean, this was one piece. You can see where this wood has moved already. Those are the stresses that were released when I cut this piece apart. See how that's pinching in back there? This splitter helped keep that from coming in further, pinching that blade down. This one's even worse. Billy, how's that bow going to affect your drawers? Well, it shouldn't because my I'm not going to be using pieces that big, but I'm hoping it doesn't. I'll be back as soon as I get these plane down. First thing I'm going to do is square one end of each board. Now I put my stop block down. I've already got it set. Sides are milled to width and length. The next thing I have to do to them is cut dados in the front side and the rabbits in the back for the joiner. All the drawer pieces are cut to size and width and thickness. Okay, I've got the dado in and set up. I've made a test cut for the right width and depth for my the drawer bottoms to go into the drawers. So now what I need to do is figure out what's going to be the top and bottom of my drawer front. See, everything's aligned, everything's set up. All I got to do is run. for the joinery for the sides of the drawers.
You use a lot of glue doing a project like this. I'm fixing to have to fill this again and I've already filled it three times. So I've got the dado stack set to cut a quarter inch wide rabbit a quarter inch deep on the drawer backs. I tried to be cute with this joint right here since I glued these up. The plans called for me to take this three quarter inch piece, cut that dado in it, and then trim this end off. Well, rather than do that, I thought when I was milling this up, I thought I'll just be smart and I will mill this rabbit on here and then glue these together and then I won't have to do that deep dado, which as you saw, I just had to do anyway. Now what I need to do is take these drawer fronts and find center and lay out the handles. I'm not going to have exterior handles on these if I did the door the the doors that I'm putting on the barn doors wouldn't work. The the handles will be cutouts basically. So I need to determine what size cutout I want to use and where I want to put it. And I'll probably use my drill press and Forstner bit to knock the the inside curves out and then I can just join those with either my bandsaw or I may just use my jigsaw. idea. If you have this sander, it's the rigid oscillating spindle sander. If you have this, you know how hard it is to get these off sometimes. And it just can really be a bear. Unless you have this tool, which I got from a friend of mine. This guy right here, patricksworkshop.com. He'll print you one of these for a small fee and it really does come in handy. It makes making this on and off so much easier. So thanks, Patrick. So I did cut these out on the bandsaw after I got them drilled, and now I'm making them nice and flat, smooth sanding down to my line. You don't have to have a spindle sander to do this. You can do it all by hand. This is a little long for what I need. It needs to be 20 and a quarter, and it's nearly 29. But I should be able to get three out of it because they need to be 13 and 5 eighths inch wide. This other piece is only 20 inches. So I'll probably only be able to get three out of that as well. That'll leave me short two and I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do there. So I don't know yet. Uh, yeah, I probably ought to go just, just go get another sheet of quarter inch. Let's get it. Now I don't have enough room on the end over here to move my fence over to get me the length I need. So I'm going to have to move some lumber around. Yeah. I forgot to hit record. So I got the six drawer bottoms milled up. I need to do two more, but let's see what the fit looks like. Now, I'm not gonna glue these up yet because I've got to sand them. That is perfect. I will sand these, glue them up, and then I'll put the finish on them. As soon as I get everything dry fit, I wanna make sure every box or every drawer fits together right. Okay, here are all the drawers. They're all just dry fit together. <clears throat> now I'm gonna take them apart and sand them inside and out, and then I will glue them up. 
There's no point in you watching me stand here with a sander, sanding all these parts. So when I get everything all sanded up, I'll come back for the glue up. Okay, I've got all of the flat surfaces sanded to 220. And what's the best way, if you've got a bunch of these things, what's the best way to sand the edges? I could go through and do them one at a time and get them where I wanted them. But the fastest way is to gang them together and then sand them all in one piece. You also lessen the risk of doing too much round over on one of the edges. Right, time to start gluing some boxes together. I'm gonna run a little bit of glue in here. And because this is plywood, I don't have to worry about it moving around. I'm going to run glue in there too. Just for an insurance policy. I don't have enough 24 inch clamps for this, so I'm going to have to do these slowly. So what I'll do is I'll leave these in the clamps. Uh, I got enough clamps to do one drawer at a time, basically. So I'll just leave this sit half hour, do up another one. 30 minutes should be long enough. Okay, I've got my template laid out for putting in the drawer slides inside the cabinet. I've got to make this first cut, then I'll set it inside, set the slide on top of it in position, and screw it in place. And then I'll move over to this side, do the same thing. Next side, do the same thing. So I, I do that four times and then I'll come back and I'll cut it off again and then I'll repeat it and then I can screw the slide piece that mounts to the drawer on and install the drawers and hopefully everything will work. Keep your fingers crossed. I'll come back. Time to make my first cut on the template. And now this is my template for installing the bottom piece. I mean the piece of rail to the drawers. This will act as a spacer. I'll set it on there and screw it in place. I need one more spacer for up here and I'll cut that next. Okay, so this is my template for putting the slide piece on the drawer. This goes up against the lip of the drawer like so. This like so. Slide it forward, pop the screws in. In theory, this should work. First things first, I want to use this template. They gave me little short screws for installing these. It's not that I don't trust them, but I don't trust them. Uh, they pretty much have to be used on the, on the drawer side because anything else would be just too long. And I don't want this going through the drawers. These are half inch screws, and so that's just about right. Let's put the first drawer on and we'll see what happens. So I use one and a quarter inch screws on the outside. On the inside, that's only three quarters of an inch. Again, I don't want it popping through.
Okay, this is obviously taking a little while, so I'm not gonna video the whole process. You've seen me put two runners up and test fit the drawers. I'm not real sure they're exactly where they're gonna stay yet. We'll see in a minute. I'll come back when I get all of the slides on. Well, I've got half, over half. I've got six of the eight slides mounted to the drawers and the cabinet. I've got some tweaking to do to even up the gaps and make me happy. I've got one that's not wanting to fit because it's got a bit of a bowed side. So I'm gonna have to use my uh, handheld electric plane and, and see if I can shave that flat. And after I get that done, then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay, I've got the left side in and mostly adjusted the way I want them. I've got a tiny bit of tweaking left to do over here on this side, but for the most part, this side is done. Now I will, in the morning, I will come back and I will raise these slides up just a tiny bit and get everything spaced out there and then I'll finish up my tweaking. Okay, all the drawers are in, they work great. I've done all of the fine tuning that I need to do. It's time to put the shelves in. I've got to mill those up, but before I do that, the, the shelves are easy. That's the easy part. What I want to do right now is skip ahead a little bit in the plans and start putting the top together. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all your support. Speaking of support, my Amazon affiliate link is down in the description below. Anything you order using that link, I get a few pennies for it. Doesn't cost you any more. But it really helps us out, and I truly, truly appreciate it. If you want swag, caps, t-shirts, coffee mugs, uh, the, some of the things that I've turned, you can find that at my website right here. If you are interested in what particular tools or colorings or whatever that I want, I've got a link to that on this page of my website as well. Again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry this one was so long. It's just one of those things that couldn't be avoided. This is, was the most complicated, partially my fault, uh, portion of the build, simply because I tried to scrounge and save and, and instead of wasting wood, and I should have just gone with fresh wood from the start. But lessons learned, you know, that's the way it goes. Please like, subscribe, share. Most importantly, remember the three L's. Live, laugh, and love. Y'all come back.